Hi friends, welcome to episode 103 of the Quirky Monday Craftcast. My name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online as Nadira Tani. Thank you so much for coming to spend some time with me today. Um, today is Tuesday, November 5th, I believe. Is that the 5th? Yes, Tuesday, November 5th. And I'm coming to you from my home in Central Florida. If you hear munching and crunching in the background, I have both Kiva and Toot outside and I just gave them a little treat. Um, and evidently it's delicious. So there's Tootie and Kiva. 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 Kiva ignores me when there's treats. I guess we can leave it here so Tootie can see us. Hey Toot, is it good? Oh, I think you ate some dirt with that one. Oh yeah. I don't think they should have eaten those treats as fast as they did. <laughs> Oh well. So, um, I'm coming to you from my home in Central Florida. I don't remember if I said that. And um, it's a pretty nice day outside. Um, it was chilly. And by chilly, by Florida terms, I mean like low 70s, high 60s for like a day. And um, now it's back up to the upper 70s. such as Florida life. Um, my shirt says cleverly disguised as a responsible adult. And this is one of only two shirts that Lamar, my husband and I have matching. We both have this one and we both have one that says Delaware, but it's Della hyphen where? Cause no one knows where that state is. Say lovey. All right. So I think that's everything for the intro bits. Yes. Yes. You would think that I would know what I'm doing by now. Let's get into some crafting. So today I have some finished objects. Um, I've got finished objects, works in progress, some plans. I think I have something in all my different segments. So let's get started before the ants take over everything. So, finished objects. The first is on my head. This is the Tillingborn Beret by Jimmy Nitz. And um, I feel like I finished this in like a week or something like that. Or maybe it was two weeks. I don't know. I finished it really fast. I finished it a lot faster than I thought I was going to. But um, once you get going with it, there's a really satisfying rhythm that you kind of build up when you're uh, working the pattern. It is a free pattern, so definitely check it out. These ridges that you're seeing here are like traveling spiral um, twists. So I really like it. My original plan was to make the whole hat this burgundy color, but shortly, well, maybe like halfway into the hat, I realized that I was indeed going to run out of yarn. So I striped it, which when I was talking to Tootie, you probably saw, but I'll turn around again. So, so I striped it with some gray yarn. Now this base or this particular yarn is the Lion Brand Jeans, the burgundy, is corduroy, the corduroy colorway, and the gray is vintage. And that's it, I made the medium size and I made it extra long. I wouldn't have run out of yarn if I made it exactly to the pattern like, um, specifications, but because I feel like I'm always talking about, whenever it comes to a hat, I always make it bigger because I have a lot of hair. And um, so you're supposed to work to like, I think six inches before you start the crown decreases. I think I worked to 10, something like that. 
like nine or ten um if you want to see basically this whole beret in progress um the video before this one Tootie, that's what happens when you eat too fast. Bless you. Stop choking. I don't know how to do the Heimlich on a dog. Um, the video that I posted right before this one um, is a vlog. And you can see the growth of this hat pretty much from like here all the way to the end. All right. So first finished object. This is the eighth project in my Black Fibers Black Threads Make Nine. And that just leaves the Spiny Socks by Fatima Hines. And then I would have completed my entire Make Nine for 2019. What if I don't wanna pet you right now? Okay, I don't have a choice. Um, my next finished object is actually a sewing finished object. So, okay, Kiva, I need both of my hands now. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Go away. You're just going to ignore me? Yeah. Okay, I need both of my hands. So, this is my... <laughs> next finished object I made a skirt so I was walking around in Joanne crafts I think is what it's called I was just gonna say Joanne's but I'm pretty sure it's like Joanne's crafts but um, I saw this fabric and y'all already know if you're viewers if you've watched any number of my episodes I love all things spacey and constellationy and when I saw this, I audibly gasped in the store. I was like, ah! and like ran over to it, like scurried, like an excited little mouse. But um, I got this uh, fabric, very, very excited that these are real constellations. I do have a problem with fake constellations, <laughs> but I made a skirt. And um, this is actually the second iteration of this skirt uh, because the first time I just, I think I got a yard and a half of this fabric and then I gathered it all up um, but that turned out to be way too much fabric around this measurement of the waistband and it's just an elastic band for the waist um, turned out to be too much fabric so I ended up uh, cutting off about half of it I think um, but yeah, I ended up cutting off quite a bit of the fabric and then reinserting the waistband, which works a lot better and it fits me a lot nicer now. Um, and since I was, uh, modifying the original skirt, I decided to put pockets in it. So it does have pot, I guess it'll be easier to show you inside. It does have pockets, which I just made out of some random white fabric that I had in my stash, but in my zeal for pocketses. I made a rookie mistake so I've only inserted pockets into one like one or two other garments in ever and basically a pocket is just like a kind of like a mitten shape so you can like I'll just do it this way because this way my arm goes you can put your your hand on a piece of fabric and trace around it like this and use that as your pocket um, the mistake that I made was I traced around my hand like this so that the inside of the pot or the the in the opening for the pocket is this big which is smaller than the widest part of my hand <laughs> so I can't really fit my hands in the pockets I mean I can like like squish my fingers together like this and like shove my hand in the pocket but that's just not practical so I made a skirt with pockets that you can't use Yay! but I really like it I like 
I really like it. It's got constellations on it. I'm gonna wear it anyway. And um, you can't, you can't really see the pockets. I guess you can. You can't really see that one. But I think what I'm gonna do, um, I'm just gonna go back and sew up the pockets. It's fine. It's fine. This skirt comes down just a little bit lower than my knees, a little bit below my knees, which is like a really nice length on me, in my opinion. And um, yeah, so I need to figure out like what kind of tops I want to wear with this. I uh, posted a picture of it the first, like with the first time I, I made the skirt with the too much fabric. And I put this on with my Hogwarts A History sweater and basically just tucked in the sweater. And it looks really nice with that gold on top of it because all of the lines in the constellation are gold, in the constellations are gold. So maybe one of these days I will use the rest of that gold yarn and knit up a top to go with this. I still have to hem the bottom, but is basically done. Yay! Stay in the back. They're guarding their territory. Let's see if you can see them. Yep. Oh, where's my hand? There's Tootie and then Kiva Butt. That's Florida wildlife, guys. I don't know what that bird was screaming about, but evidently it's an emergency. My last finished object is one that I mentioned wanting to make, I think a couple episodes back. And then I took the yarn to work with me yesterday. I worked on the first one during my lunch finished it when I got home, blazed through the second one, and now I have a finished set of Grinch feet. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited guys, I can't handle it. So, I, okay, I spent quite a while like over like yesterday morning and the day before that in the evening looking on Pinterest trying to find a crochet pattern like a really simple crochet pattern for like elf shoes and I couldn't find one that I liked and I finally came across this um, diagram I can't remember where it was from and I don't even know if I pinned it on Pinterest but I'll see if I can find it and um, either insert a picture of it or link it below But basically what you do is you make a granny square and then you fold it diagonally. Let me actually show you my doodle. So you make a granny square and then you fold it diagonally. So that's the fold. And then the length across the bottom, you want that to be your foot length. And then you're gonna seam up that bottom part and then halfway up this side and then fold down the top and it'll make a little slipper so um, I made mine I did three rows of a traditional granny and then five rows of a solid granny stitch well solid not really granny if it's not in three clusters, whatever but let me show you what I've got And I did, like I curled in the toe a little bit and I'm hoping that it'll sit up a little bit more like that when I'm wearing them. But uh, this yarn is Lion Brand Homespun in the forest colorway. So <laughs> that's my little Grinch shoe. And I have another one. This is what it looks like when it's flat. And then this is what it looks like when it's like foot shaped, but Thank <laughs> you. 
so I have Grinch feet. And why am I so why am I so excited about this? Well, we're gonna be taking our Christmas pictures, we being me, Lamar, and Kiva and Toot. We're gonna be taking our Christmas pictures day after tomorrow. Nope tomorrow we're gonna to be taking our Christmas pictures tomorrow evening and um, I will be wearing my Grinch feet I'll just put that there we'll talk about that a little bit more in life and whatnot at the end so that's my last finished object my Grinch feet I'm so excited about them I FaceTime my mom last night actually no I tried to FaceTime her she didn't answer I sent a video to my mom last night and she said that <laughs> I looked like the excited Kermit gif where like he's just like <laughs> like that's what I looked like because I was so excited about my Grinch feet works in progress <laughs> so I have I've only listed one work in progress because it's basically all I have that's currently in the works and that is you may have guessed it the camp socks we're still we are still working on these um, I think because I finished the the one sock of each of them and I've been doing a lot of work on the actual written pattern I haven't been super motivated to finish the other two um, but I have done, I've gotten a lot of work done. The last time you guys saw it was before I did the heel flap. Or it might have been right as soon as I finished the heel flap. But one of the things that I was practicing and really working on with these, and here's the other one. <clears throat> this is Camp Hawthorne. And this is Camp Kalakwa. But... One of the things that I was, or one of the techniques that I was implementing while doing the heel flap, um, the heel turn, yeah, the heel flap and the heel turn, because those are both worked flat, instead of knitting and then turning the sock around and purling, I practiced knitting backwards, which I didn't know was a thing. Um, I had first heard about it from the basic stitch podcast I think is what she's called um, but she was saying how sometimes when she's knitting on really big shawls she doesn't like to purl back that she'll just knit backwards and it's easier on her hands and then someone also mentioned knitting backwards when I was trying to figure out how to purl color work so I decided to watch a couple videos so I decided to um, try to learn how to knit backwards and I watched I think I watched the video by um, on the basic stitch podcast channel I can't remember her name right now I'll put it on the screen and I'll also link um, the video that I watched down below but it's actually pretty simple so I actually did both of the heel flaps and both of the heel turns using the knitting backwards technique um, so I will definitely be implementing that um, when I'm working on any large pieces that need to have like that you knit one way and purl back the other um, it's not faster than the way that I purl I actually think I purl pretty fast um, but it's a different motion and that's really good if you know if you're working on a pretty big project um, you want to be able to change around your your knitting and, and purling techniques so that you don't get those repetitive motion strains and things. So I have finished the gusset on both of them, so I'm just working down the foot now. And hopefully, you know, these will be done before 2020. Fingers crossed. That's the only work in progress that I have that actually has like stuff to show you. Um, We'll shift into maker plans, um, which is kind of like this next project is kind of straddling between maker plans and uh, works in progress because I've kind of done a, a gauge swatch. 
Oh, and I say kind of because I get bored when swatching. I don't like swatching. Does anybody like swatching? Is that a thing? Um, so the project that I want to do for my next maker plan is the Ripple Camisole. And that is a pattern by Jessie Mae Martinson. And she is the designer of all things rippled. Um, she did the ripple bralette, the ripple crop top. And then she did an update where she did a ripple crop top worsted. And just recently she released the ripple camisole. And I had been looking at the ripple bralette, but it was just something about the shape of it that didn't really like grab me. So I was like, oh, you know, I really like that. It's cute, but I don't know if I really wear it um, with the like the spaghetti straps and the cross and the crisscross in the back and stuff like that. I didn't know if that particular look was one that I would get a lot of wear out of. Um, and then she released the Ripple camisole. And the camisole is more along the lines of a tank top look. So I'll put in a picture of it. And um, yeah, so I wanna make that. So I started doing the gauge swatch and this is as far as I got. Um, the camisole is made with, a, well she used a single ply fingering weight and I am using La Mia Bamboo. This is one of the yarns that I got from Hobium. And they sent me um, a pack of this yarn along with some other ones to try out and kind of talk about. So this is the first, yeah, this is the first yarn. Yeah, this is the first yarn from that box that I'm, I'm getting to use. This yarn, it's 100% bamboo, and it's classed as a number three, which puts it kind of at a sport DK-ish weight. So I knit up the gauge swatch, and um, for the stitches, like the amount of stitches, uh, Jesse gives you a, a gauge for a DK, and I'm right on gauge for that. Um, so now I just have to decide what size I wanna make, like if I wanna make it fitted or a little bit loose. I'm thinking I want it to be just kind of a little bit loose, not too, too, like, you know, um, just because it's Florida. You don't really want a whole lot of things on your skin. Um, so I might go maybe one size or no. The pattern is made to have like eight inches of negative ease. Um, so I think I will select a size that gives me closer to zero inches of negative ease, I think. And I should have enough yarn for whichever size I do decide to do. But that's how the yarn is knitting up. It's very, um, it has a really nice kind of shine and smoothness to it. Um, it does, like looking at how it's plied, I have a feeling that as I'm working on it, it might get a little bit splitty, but um, hopefully that won't happen. But I like it so far. This is all I've knit with this particular yarn and I will keep you guys up to date on how I like working with the Lamia Bamboo. Um, I also have Lamia Cottony, um, which I think is the same weight, but it's a 100% cotton blend. 100% cotton blend, that don't even make sense. It's, um, I think it's 100% cotton. So maybe I'll make another one out of that. Who knows? But this is how much I have, well, plus one more. So it is, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have 750 yards. Yeah, I have 750 yards of this yarn um, to make my 
ripple camisole. Okay. The thank you. Hi Kiva. You're back for more cuddles? Yes. Yes. Do you want to come sit next to me? Yeah? Come on up here. Come on. You're just going to stand there and look sad with your little beagle eyes? Come here. Come on. Come up here. Come on. Come on, Kiva. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There you are. Thank you. You're such an old girl. You do what you want when you want, huh? Yes. You do it because you want to do it and not because I said to do it. Okay. So my next maker plan is another straddling project. So my next maker plan is actually straddling into Kalisha and the Babe. So Kalisha and the Babe is my spinning section and I call it that because my spinning wheel is a babe, um, a babe, I forget which model it is. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. But um, yeah, so Kalisha and the babe. So my next maker plan is a Christmas project, a Christmas project. My next maker plan is a, an idea for a Christmas present for my mom. So my mom collects um, black angels. And so whenever I see one anywhere, I pick it up for her. Whenever, um, whenever I see one, I always think about her. But um, she also has a couple black angels that I've made for her over the years. So I told her that I wanted to spin some yarn to make something for her, but I couldn't figure out if I wanted to make her a hat or what, or what have you. So I decided that I want to make her an angel. And I have another doodle in here of what I want it to look like. So I'm thinking I'm gonna spin some yarn for the body. And I think the body I wanted to do, I wanna do it like a cone shape and then we'll attach some, uh, I almost said arms, no. We'll attach some wings and um, of course the head and the halo. Um, the whole thing I'm thinking is going to be crocheted. Um, definitely going to be crocheted because I'm much more confident in making up stuff as I go along with crochet. Um, so this is the look that I'm going for. And I, I blended up the fiber yesterday and I made Rolex. This is my first time making Rolex and I think out of what should have been like 12 Rolags, I got maybe eight Rolags and a bunch of Rolish things. <laughs> um, so let me show you and then I'll tell you what the blend is. So this is what I was able to create. And when I say, I'm counting this as a like proper Rolag, right? It feels like one roll of fiber, one tube of fiber. And I also got ones that just fell apart like that, ones that fell apart like this. Um, ones like this that were just like super skinny whatever um yeah but i think that's pretty good for a first time ever making a real roll egg Ta -da. so the blend here is i have um 0.6 ounces of white cheviot um, 0.7 ounces of red merino, 0.3 ounces of gray merino, uh, 0.4 ounces of this pearly white fiber. I'm not sure what that was. And then there's also some gold, like glittery something or another, and red glittery something or another. 
all of the fibers in these Rolags, except for the red and gray merino, were gifted to me. So um, it's been fun to play with the different textures. So what I'm going to try with these, I'm actually going to spin these backwards. So typically when you spin, you spin your singles clockwise and then you spin your or you ply them counterclockwise so because I'm planning to use this for crocheting I want to see if it works up any different or if it feels any different with the crochet if I spin my singles counterclockwise and then ply them clockwise which um, will create a Z plied yarn yes and the reason that that is supposed to be better for crochet is um, based on the way that you yarn over um, the way that you yarn over in crochet is backwards or the reverse of the way that you yarn over when you're knitting so um, if you have you know a regular plied yarn and you're crocheting along um, it's it's common to see the yarn kind of untwist as you're crocheting with it Whereas if you're knitting with that same fiber or that same yarn, um, the yarn can get tighter as you continue knitting with it. That can happen. So this will be kind of an experiment. And yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm probably gonna put this on the wheel um, later on today if I have time because I made myself a to-do list that is like a mile long. So we'll see. Um, yeah, so that is my maker plan that is straddling Kalisha and the babe. So since we have straddled into Kalisha and the babe, let's continue with Kalisha and the babe. And I will show you my finished spin. So this is my finished spin. I actually showed this on uh, the vlog that I just posted, but the lighting was kind of trash because I was showing it at nighttime in my bedroom but that that is the fiber and this is da -da -da, uh, two ounces half of it is Cordale which is um, a, the buttercup color and the mustard color 25% um, is yellow merino and 25% is the white cheviot so the same cheviot that I have in the other Rolex um, this I created little bats from, or I created this from little bats, and um, yeah, I really like it. Let's see if you can see the different colors. You can kind of see them a little bit. My iPad doesn't do autofocus, so. Um, I came out with 98 yards. Um, and I think, I don't know, there's some, <clears throat> there's some parts in here that are like, that could be fingering weight, um, but it's probably better if I treat this as like a sport or DK. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm very happy with it and it makes me smile and it's bright yellow and yes. So that's it for Kalisha and the babe. And my throat is getting tired. Ooh. Okay. The next section that I want to talk about kind of quickly is Quirky Monday Crafts. So Quirky Monday Crafts is my Etsy shop um, where I sell zipper bags. Zipper bags for projects, for whatever you want to put in them. <laughs> and um, so I am planning an update. I have had the fabric cut for like fall theme bags for a couple weeks now. And I have just not properly made time to finish them. But... Today is the day I am going to be sitting down and working like a little squirrel, 
gathering nuts for the winter. Like I'm gonna focus. Can you stop screaming? What are you yelling about? You're just yelling? Okay. Tootie's barking, birds are screaming, squirrels are running around in the trees. Shouldn't it be quieter in November? Shouldn't it? But anyway, so I've had these fabrics cut for a while and I'm gonna work on them today, but I wanted to show you the patterns that are gonna be going up in the shop. So my original plan was just to finish the fall bags and put them up and then wait a little bit and put like Christmas and winter bags up. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna finish everything that I can finish and put it all up. And I'm also not going to wait. Good grief. I'm also not going to wait for uh, for me to finish a whole lot of them to put up. So um, they're gonna be sporadically going up into the shop. Um, I will, however, post pictures of the bags on Instagram so that you can see what will be going up into the shop or what is headed into the shop. Um, yeah, so these are the fabrics that I'm gonna be working with. I will show you the fall ones first because these are gonna be the ones that get my attention first. So a lot of these fabrics are ones that I was working with last year and some of them are new. So, and these are all, what? What is happening? Who are you even talking to? And it's not even like a nice pitch. Like it's a really annoying note. Yes, all of these, all of the bags that I have cut here are my small bags, um, just because that's my favorite size. I love my small bag. Um, it's like sock size or small, sh small shawl sized. Um, so let me, see if I can hold these up okay so this one these three here are new so you've got the blue this one kind of looks like block printing which I thought was really cool we've got this one that's kind of like a, a batik kind of fabric another uh, fall colored batik fabric pumpkins because you have to and then this one is like a fall floral. Um, I had the, the pumpkins and the fall floral last year. And then we've got these. I've got one of these. I thought I had more of this fabric, but I don't think I do. So this might be the only one of its kind. Some more fall floral and then some little pumpkins. All three of these were from last year as well. Then we've got, this one will be a solid bag. This fabric is actually a vintage fabric that I found. Um, a, a while ago, I found a really big bag of fabric from the thrift store and a lot of them had like old school vintage prints on them. So I've been, basically hoarding them because I thought they were so sweet and cute but I've got this one this is gonna be a solid bag and I'll have two of these and then we've got solid bag of this one solid of that one and solid of that one so those are all of the fall bags that'll be going into the shop these are all contrast. So this will be the fabric on top of the bag and then the base will be a solid color that contrasts with it or coordinates rather. So that's fall, which still wanting to see some around here. Florida hates fall. And then 
I also got some fabric for winter and Christmas. I wanted to make sure to do winter themed uh, bags as well as like the Christmassy ones because I know not everybody celebrates Christmas and I don't want to leave anybody out. So I will show you. I'll put the winter fabrics together and the Christmas fabrics together. I actually got more winter fabrics than Christmas fabrics, so yay me. So these are the only two like Christmas Christmas ones that I got. I got this one because I just thought that was really cute. And I love things that are not like true, like real Christmas trees. So like last year I had flamingos with Santa hats. I was looking for that fabric again this year and I cannot find it yet, but if I find it, there will be some Florida Christmas uh, bags. And I also got this one. And then for the winter, we've got that. This one kind of gave me Harry Potter vibes. Yeah. Then we've got these. Oh, I guess I could show you this way, which makes more sense. And this one. I loved these colors. Like, it's really cool. This reminds me of something Disney, maybe? I don't know. It gives me a Disney feel. And then the last things that I picked up, I had to get Nightmare Before Christmas. So I've got the Pumpkin King himself, just some Jack Skellington heads. And this one. Um, and that's everything. I'm going to be cutting these, getting the shop ready. Um, so if you are not following the Quirky Monday Craft shop on Etsy, you can definitely go over there and follow. And then you'll get a notification whenever I upload new, new um, products. Um, also follow me on Instagram. I am Nadira Tani. And that's where I post the bags, like pictures of the bags before they go into the shop. So you guys kind of have a heads up. That's everything for the shop and we will do life and whatnot. But first, let me plug in my iPad because it's going to die. This is the kind of trauma that Florida gives me, okay? All I'm trying to do is plug in my iPad so that I can finish the podcast. You see my, my podcast bits down there. And there is an entire lizard in the plug. Can you see him? No, you can't see him, but he's in there. Ugh. Why, Florida? Why? Run, lizard. Oh, that was a leaf. He's just sitting there. He's huge. Freaking baby Godzilla. Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed that quick intermission and the video of how Florida harasses me. <laughs> um, I was going to tell you guys, oh, we were doing life and whatnot before the iPad decided that now was the time to die. So, let's see. Life and whatnot. My back neighbor has decided to do lawn work right now. And he just finished, or they just finished uh, cutting the grass with what was assuming I'm assuming a riding lawnmower because it was very loud. And now there's weed whacking. Meh. All right, life and whatnot. We're just gonna, we're gonna press on. How long does it take to weed whack? This is gonna annoy me. I'll be back when he's done. 
Take four. Life and whatnot. Tomorrow, me and Lamar and the dogs are getting our Christmas pictures done. And I have two outfits for us because I'm that person. Um, we're going to do like a nice regular family picture in like blue and white because Lamar said he wanted the theme to be silver bells and us to wear like navy blue and silver but I don't have silver pants who has silver pants so we're gonna do navy blue and white so I should have the pictures by the time that I get around to editing this so I'll be able to put in a picture of us so here is our Christmas picture <laughs> and then our outfit change is the reason that I made the Grinch shoes. I bought myself a new Grinch onesie and I really wanted to do like to wear it in the pictures because it's just so ridiculous I love it and didn't want to be barefoot or wear socks so I had to make Grinch shoes right it makes sense it makes sense guys right so um yeah um I wanted to figure out something for Lamar to wear uh, whilst I have my whole Grinch get up on and I knew he wasn't he's not like a onesie wearing kind of guy so I got him this shirt found it at Walmart five dollars so he can be Santa I can be the Grinch and even more than like my excitement for being the Grinch is like here my excitement for the shirts that I found for the dogs is like here <laughs> yes! oh my gosh Kiva and Toot are gonna be my reindeers in training and I got some brown pipe cleaners and I made little antlers and I'm gonna tie it to their head like Max my Grinchy dreams are about to come true tomorrow night. <sighs> so here's pictures of my Grinchy dreams coming true. So yeah, that's everything for life and whatnot. That's what I've been trying to tell y'all while the neighbors were cutting grass and weed whacking and the birds were screaming and all kinds of, all manner of foolishness was happening. I'm just excited for Christmas pictures and to be out in public in my Grinch onesie. I was trying to come up with a reason to walk through the mall in my Grinch onesie but I don't know if I am that adventurous. I played it out in my head a couple times because the, the big Christmas tree is up in the mall and they have really big ornaments on it. And I was like, oh my goodness, this would be a perfect photo op for me to go sneaking through the mall like the Grinch and try to like steal the tree, right? I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. But yeah, that is everything guys. Um, Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I apologize for all 70 billion of the interruptions that we had in this episode. This is going to be crazy town for me to edit, but it's gonna happen. I didn't see any specific shareable bright spots, but there was one that really made me laugh on, I think it was the last episode. Um, the comment was um, a hair comment. So in that episode, I talked about how this one little girl told me or told her mom that I had a big globe of hair. And this uh, one particular lady was saying that she has really, really long blonde hair and she wears it in a braid um, most of the time. And she said she was out and I think it was the grocery store and heard a little girl exclaim, mommy, that lady has Rapunzel hair. And that just made me laugh because kids are always so excited about things like that. Like, we're just like, oh, I'm just gonna put my hair in a braid and go grocery shopping. And kids are like, oh my gosh, it's Rapunzel. Kids are pretty cool. But yeah, if you have a bright spot or something positive that happened to you that you would like me to share on the podcast, definitely leave it in a comment down below. Let me know that it is a shareable bright spot, positive moment type dealio. 
and um, I will share that with the fam. Um, what else? Yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful day, week, weekend, whatever it is. Um, and I hope that I hope that your November is starting out really well. I hope you had an enjoyable October. And we are almost to the end of yet another year. This is amazing, guys. The days are long, but the years are short. No truer statement has ever been uttered. Um, but yeah, you all have a wonderful time. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being a part of my universe. Bye.